Hello everyone and we welcome you into Golf Center's special coverage of the 2017 Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. I'm Chris Tremblay, joined by Daniel Court. Daniel, good to be back with you again. It's great to be here. Thanks for asking me. We look at the average PGA Tour event. Generally, they have a field of 144 to 156 players. This tournament makes those pale by comparison. Dwarfs it, yeah. We're talking 850 players. Um, 50. 54 holes, five divisions play in uh, individual stroke play, so it's very competitive, can make for some long rounds, but my gosh, this is the national championship, and 850 golfers on our beautiful island, That's uh, it makes good for business and good for exposure. We like to hear that a lot. Yes, good for the do. local economy, that's for sure. Sure is. What you'll be watching today is I'll be over at the Country Club of Hilton Head covering that golf course where the championship flight is. I'll also be interviewing Dennis McCormick, the tournament chairman, as well as Gary Otto, the uh, head pro at the Country Club of Hilton Head. Who to watch out for in the championship flight? Well, entering the final round, Joe Jaspers, the five-time champion. Strong. He holds a six-stroke lead, and he's going to be tough to catch. Ooh. How about you? Oh, yeah. You're going to be at Palmetto Dunes. What will you be doing? Yeah, I'll be over at the Jones course at Palmetto Dunes uh, with the B flight. And right now, it looks like the front runners there are going to be um, Casey Dickinson from uh, Kentucky. There's uh, a couple of close uh, front runners uh, right on his heels, Ed Greenfield of Arkansas and uh, an Atlanta guy, his first time competing is uh, Purvis Precia. So I would be looking for those three to make a run at the uh, championship today. Well folks, we're glad you're with us. We'd like you to sit back, relax, and enjoy Golf Center's coverage of the 2017 Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. And we welcome in Tournament Chairman Dennis McCormick. Dennis, thanks so much for taking a little time to be with us. I know you're very busy this week. Thank you very much, yes. 23rd year the tour has existed, 12th year in a row the national championship has been here. Is it safe to say at this point that we've found a permanent home for this tournament? We most definitely have. I actually moved myself here last year. My wife and I live permanently in Palmetto Dunes, and we do have five-year extensions on all of our courses, all eight courses that we're playing this week. We have 850 contestants here competing in the regular division, but later on this week, we have a senior division that's being started. Tell yeah. us about it. That's correct. Uh, the seniors used to play down here in November, and we decided to put it and make it a one-week tour championship. So I have 250 seniors starting on Tuesday for a three-day event. Uh, there are over 250 seniors playing this week. So that brings the total number of contestants that are playing between the two championships up to 1,100. I think the local economy is going to benefit from that, don't you? Yeah, I would say so. 1,100 guys with family and wives. Most of them come down for the entire week. And uh, yeah, it's great for Hilton. Sponsors play a huge role, obviously, in this event. Tell us about them and what they're doing this week. Sure. Well, my engine, obviously, is Golf Week. Uh, they, they, we're in the magazine every week. The, the winners of this tournament will be on the cover of Golf Week in the end of December. Obviously, uh, Edwin Watts is a big benefactor, our retail's partner. TaylorMade did over 200 fittings so far this week. They are staying through the senior final. They are a great customer of ours, as well as GolfBreaks.com. The Stand Up to Charity, or Stand Up to Cancer Charity, a big, big part of the tour, not only of this championship, but of your tour in general. I know that's very close to your heart. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, my mom passed away of lymphoma when I was in college, and uh, just recently I lost my most tenured director, Bruce Hollenbeck. He'd been with me for 20 years, and he passed away this April. But we are doing everything we can. We've raised over $175,000 nationally and we continue to raise more and more each year. And I can tell that that obviously touches you every time you bring it up because we've talked about it in the past and you know it's something that at one time or another it seems as though all of us have to deal with. That is correct. Uh, we, we currently have some other players that have cancerous uh, situations going on including my tour director in Chicago. His father just got diagnosed with liver cancer. Tell us about the overall growth of the tour and the numbers we're at at this point in time. We just reached the 5,000 member mark for the first time ever in our 23 year history. We are currently in 45 cities across the country and the tournament here today, 850 ties our largest mark ever. 
Live scoring, a new feature this year. Quickly tell us about that if you could. Yeah, it's awesome. You can go to amateurgolftour.net and right on our front page right now, you can see a live score button. It is just like the PGA Tour. You can know exactly where everyone is on the golf course. So not only the guys playing here today, but all their family members back home can see it. And once again, the website is for those who want to do the live scoring or get involved in the tour, amateurgolftour.net. Dennis, thanks so much for your time. You can get back to all the things you need to do now. Thanks for having me, guys. Hi, this is Daniel Court reporting for WHHI's Golf Center. And I am here with my good friend, old, old friend, uh, Clark Sinclair, who's the director of golf here at the beautiful uh, Palmetto Dunes Resort, which is once again hosting the Golf Week's Amateur Tour, correct? It is, it is for the 12th year in a row. 12th 12, 12th year in a row. 12 years in a row, and we're here at the Robert Trent Jones course, which I understand uh, was once again given Golf Week's 2017 best courses, uh, resort courses in the country. So just the accolades uh, keep coming in for this beautiful island on Hilton Head. Uh, Clark, this is um, this is a huge event. This is the national championship, isn't it? It, it is. It's, it's a great event. They bring uh, a lot of golfers and a lot of uh, visits to the community and it's fun to have them here and the organizers of the event uh, have it down pat so it's easy. Now they're not just here, we're talking like what, 850 golfers? Eight, yeah, 850 plus and we've got them spread out over nine courses on the island so it's, uh, it's great for everybody. It's super for our island too, isn't it? Yeah. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about, for those that don't know as much about Palmetto Dunes, it's not, you, you've got 54 holes of golf here, but it's not just about golf, is it? It is not, but we are really proud of our courses. We've got three distinct golf courses and layouts. Uh, the biggest draw here is obviously the beach, which is fabulous. Uh, uh, my company has uh, entities everywhere. We've got a, a beachfront restaurant. We've got Alexander's Restaurant. There's restaurants all over, so you can come to this place and not have to leave the leave Palmetto Dunes. Uh, we've got a marina with a tours and charters and we've got our outfitters with bikes and and kayaks for the 10 mile lagoon system and our our world renowned tennis center and on and on if, if it's too much to mention if you just go to our website there's tons on there yeah it's really why hilton head continues to be one of the top family resort destinations in the entire united states in fact i think palmetto dunes was rated in the top three top resorts in the country, is that right? It was, I believe Condé Nast ranked us at number three, which is a, a really big honor. And touching on families, we are super family friendly in the summertime. Love to have them, we've got things set up for them. Four seater carts and all sorts of stuff all over the property. Love them. Awesome, I've seen some uh, some big fish in these uh, canals. We've, we've got some huge fish. We have tarpon in, a, in our lagoon system. We stock every fall. Or, or periodically with redfish. They have a big thing over at the Outfitters where we restock, which is great. Doormat, flounder, uh, anything that's anything that's in the uh, local waters makes it into our lagoon system through our through our water system. So as you can see, folks, there's a little bit to do for everyone, not just golfers. However, this is about golf today. Uh, we've got some exciting action out on the course as we uh, close in on the final round and uh, crown a champion. So uh, we're not going to let the rain dampen our spirits. It looks like the weather is going to start clearing for us. But uh, once again, Clark, I want to say thank you for uh, having us. Thank you for hosting this amazing event. And uh, are we going to see you next year? I hope so. It's, it's going to be good. We're planning for it already. Thank you, Clark, and thank you for watching. This is Daniel Court reporting for Golf Center. We'll see ya. And we welcome in Country Club of Hilton Head golf professional Gary Otto. Gary, thanks so much for taking a little time to be with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. We have the championship flight here today. Tell us a little bit about the golf course and what they're going to see coming down the stretch that will always make for an exciting finish. I'll tell you, we have a great uh, set of four finishing holes. 15 is definitely a birdie opportunity for them. they got to lace it up a little bit on 16, 17, really demanding holes off the tee and then they have a par 5 18 coming in. So the last four should really be a big tail for the tournament. You've had some bunker work done here recently. Tell us about it. So proud of that. We redid all the bunkers, tee to green, with the new Better Billy bunkers, just like a lot of the tour stops have. So the bunker system out here is great. So I like that Better Billy bunker. That sounds yeah. cool. And I think it was a local guy that did it, actually, is what okay. I heard. But anyway, they, they do them all over the country, and the bunkers are just fabulous if you happen to be in one. 
If somebody's a member here at the Country Club of Hilton Head, besides the golf, what other amenities do they have? We are definitely a full service club. The golf course is currently a semi-private uh, facility. The remaining things for our members, we have a full upscale dining, five-star dining upstairs with an executive chef. Uh, when you walk down to fitness, we have a state-of-the-art fitness facility. We have an indoor pool, an outdoor pool, and tennis course. So we were a full service country club. Now, you're owned by Club Corp. And if you're a member at a Club Corp facility, there's some other benefits that go along with that, are there not? Man, that is the greatest thing about being a member of the Club Corp family. Uh, we have a thing for our membership, it's called the One Program. It gives them playing opportunities as a member for all of our courses across the country, which is around 200 now. So you, you can be a member here as well as you know down in Firestone as an example. There's a ton of different golf courses out there we have. That's good stuff. However, the public can still play here, can they not? The public is welcome. We always like to think I'm as a member for the day. And a friend of mine once told me, everybody here at one time was a guest. And we want to give them that member experience and hopefully have them come in and enjoy it and maybe become a member of our course one day. How can people find out more info about the Country Club of Hilton Head? Uh, call myself in the golf shop or we have a membership director, Vanessa. She'll be more than happy to set up an appointment to come out and visit the club. We'll give you a tour of the facility, get you on the golf course, give you that experience. And uh, also, our HiltonHeadClub.com is our website. We'll be happy to take emails as well. Gary, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Terry Lanning now for his birdie from just inside where Moritz was. And he capitalizes, so Terry Lanning goes back to plus two for the day, moving to the 16th hole here at the Country Club of Hilton Head. Scott Patnode now, after hitting it a little heavy out of the front greenside bunker, he has this to save par. It looks like it has pretty good speed. Well done, has left himself the better part of three and a half to four feet now for his bogey. Here on the 13th green with Alan Hagen of Charlotte, North Carolina. Beautiful two putt here for his par. Tournament leader Casey Dickinson, the Kentucky man, has 12 feet to save his par. Speed looks really good and right in the center of the hole. What a par save, clutch. Casey Dickinson remains in the lead here in the final round of the national championship. On the 17th tee now with the championship flight, 402 yard par four, moves a little bit to the left. Bryce Burke hitting first, and he's done it perfectly. That should be right where you want to have it. And he's driven it actually a little through the fairway, but that should be fine. That's just going to leave him with a little flip wedge in. Up next, Jason Page. He also has driver out. And Page also hits it perfectly right up the left side. It's going to be right in the middle of the fairway. And now tournament leader, Big Joe Jaspers, looking to add another one to his trophy case. He hits it and it's going to trim, just misses the tree overhanging there and that scoots into the left side of the fairway. And finally, Scott Patnode, such a pretty tee shot here. Scott hits it, it might need to turn just a little, which it's doing, and that should be just fine. So four terrific tee shots here by the leading group here on 17. We're here on the 17th tee box. Ed Greenfield from Arkansas at plus 25, one back of Casey Dickinson. Nice looking swing, balls away. He's looking at it fairly anxiously. Oh, this oh. is a gorgeous shot. My goodness, Ed Greenfield through the driving rain puts it about three feet here for birdie on 17, probably one of the shots of the tournament. Jason Page now on 17 here for birdie. As you can see, the skies have opened up on us. He's got the better part of about 50 feet. And the putt is on its way. And it looks like it has pretty darn good speed. And a fine putt by Jason Page. Runs it by by about three and a half, four feet. Bryce Bowers now ready, getting ready to putt his birdie. He's got about 25 feet straight up the hill. And the rain should slow the greens down just a touch. That ball appeared to get a little airborne. Let's see if it has enough. Well, good distance, just a little bit left. So he'll tap in for par. And now tournament leader Joe Jaspers. He has about 12 feet for his birdie, just right of the pin. And it's on its way, and that looks pretty good. Oh! Just hits the left edge and spins out. Nice stroke there by Jaspers. He'll tap in for his par. Maintains his lead. He'll go to 18 with a comfortable lead. Scott Patnode now. About six feet for his par. He was right of the pin by about 25 feet. Ran it about six feet by. So a little uphiller here. He can 
be aggressive with this. Now get up and nicely done. So nice two putt for Scott Patnode. Jason Page now looking to clean up his par. He had about 50 feet from the front of the green. Ran it about four feet by. So a little tester here also. Should move a little bit to his right. And it does, right in the middle. So well done. Nice two putt from about 50 feet. Terry landing now for his par. If he makes this, more than likely he will finish tied for third. And in it goes. So a good tournament for Terry Lanning also. Nice round on a challenging day where there was some rain and some wind. But Joe Jaspers, who's in the final group, he's made it tough for everybody today. And he should be coming in comfortably here to 18 to another championship. At Greenfield here on 17. And it is right in the middle as he pumps his fist. That puts him in a tie for the lead with Casey Dickinson. This is going to be exciting as we come down the stretch. Ed Greenfield, the Arkansas man, birdie here at 17, hits one of the shots probably of the tournament. 175 yards through a driving rain to about three feet and center cuts it. And here's the moment of truth for Kentucky native Casey Dickinson. His birdie bid is away up the hill. Looks like this is going to come up woefully short. Oh, Dickinson leaves that uh, birdie putt at least eight feet short. He'll have some pressure coming up here for par to remain in the lead by one. Casey Dickinson for his par and the national championship. It's away. It's right in the center. My, what a... What a clutch performance of chipping and putting coming down the stretch for Casey Dickinson. Probably didn't know he could three-putt that and still win, but it just didn't matter. Casey Dickinson is your Golf Week National Tour National Champion. Joe Jasper is here now, ready for his third shot on 18. Two over for the day after bogeys on 15 and 16. Part on 17. Still has a six-shot lead. And his shot's coming in. It's going to be a little right of the pin, but it looks to be about pin high. And that's exactly where it ends up. So Joe Jasper's two putts from there, and he's going to win by more than likely about half a dozen. Scott Patnode now hitting his third from about 120 out here on 18. He currently sits third from the left rough, so this might jump a little bit on him. Downwind, pin just on top of the second level. That looks pretty good. Looks to be a little left of the pin, but the distance should be pretty good. He's left himself an uphill putt of about 20 feet. So for Scott Patnode, he's got a birdie putt here on 18. Joe Jasper's now surveying things here on 18. He's got a downhiller about probably the better part of close to 25 feet, leading currently by six. So without doing the math, he has a lot of putts here to maintain his position as the winner to be. But knowing Joe, he's looking to either make this or make sure he two putts and finishes out the way he wants. And that looks pretty good. And for Joe Jaspers from 25 feet, it's now an even half dozen national championships here on the Golf Week Amateur Tour. Joe Jaspers, your champion. Scott Patnode now for his birdie. If he makes this, he will finish solo third place. He has an uphiller of about 20 feet, so he can give this a go. Putting left hand low. That might need to go just a little bit. And it looks like he had a really good line on that, but just didn't quite hit it. No doubt the greens are still holding a little moisture from the rain we just had come in. Both he and Jason Page misjudge the speed coming up. So Pat No taps it in for bogey. Disappointing way to finish, but still a nice championship for him. But once again, for the sixth time, Joe Jaspers from the Charlotte Tour has claimed another Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. And we welcome in championship flight winner Joe Jaspers from the Charlotte Tour. Shoots a one over par 73 today to finish even for the tournament. An eight shot victory for your sixth title. What is it with you coming down here to Hilton Head in this tournament? This is a pretty competitive field. It's, it's very competitive and uh, I just like Hilton Head, I guess. It treats me well. Tell us about your game coming in this year. It sounds to me like when you were being interviewed before as though it was a little up and down, but obviously you regrouped pretty much when you got here. I really did regroup. I, I've actually been playing a little bit better lately. I've been real inconsistent all year, but uh, other than Saturday, I, I hit the ball pretty darn good. Talk to us about the strength of the Charlotte Tour and the camaraderie and just your enjoyment of playing with the fellas up there. Yeah, I think I've played about 20 years on this tour and developed some good close friendships with a, with a lot of good people and uh, that's what makes it fun. That's why I want to go out and play and, and I love to compete and uh, there's some tough competition in Charlotte, and you got to bring your A game or you'll get run over. 
Oh, there's no doubt about that. Tell us about your play here starting with day one and you know, an eight shot victory means of course it's played pretty tough. Yeah, they always the scores are always a little bit higher here and I was, quite frankly, I was a little surprised how well I played on, on Friday. I hadn't had a round like that, you know, where I played a complete 18 holes uh, really all year. And that was here at the Country Club of Hilton Head. Yes. Then you went over to the Hills course at Palmetto Hall. Still a pretty decent round there, but that's some track, isn't it? It is a really good track, and boy, that was a that was quite an adventure yesterday. I was I was hitting the ball pretty erratic, and uh, my short game saved me. Plans for coming back in the future? You think you might come and try to get number seven? Absolutely, I'll be here to try to get seven, eight, nine, and ten if I can. What are plans do you have for the rest of the year moving forward? Uh, pretty much winding down. Got a four ball coming up in a couple weeks, and that will pretty much do it for this year until uh, next February. Well, Joe, congratulations on a sixth title. We wish you well the rest of the year, and we look forward to having you back next year. Thank you. And we welcome in another member of the Charlotte Tour, Tom Chambers, champion of the A flight. You're now a national champion. How's that sound? Uh, sounds really good, especially after last year. I uh, did have the lead last year and kind of gave it back and, and moved back deep in the field. But, um, so coming back this year and putting myself in contention and finishing it off this time was really awesome. We'll get into almost what happened just a sec uh, this year. You were trailing by one coming into today. You let it get away last year. How did you feel before things got started today? Um, actually, the experience from last year kind of helps settle me down for today. I felt um, it was mine to win, not mine to lose. So it was a little different mindset, but the experience from last year really did help a lot. You were obviously pretty steady. What do you think of Atlantic Dunes today? Uh, it was playing really tough, especially with the rain, and then we had a, about an hour and a half or two hour rain delay and kind of stiffen up. I'm not quite as young as I used to be, but none of us are. <laughs> getting back into uh, the, the competition after that, that uh, rain delay, you know, it took a little while, but we came out swinging. So you built up a pretty good lead, and then we got to 17, and? Uh, yeah, well, that's where all the fun happened. So in our practice rounds, it was kind of funny because I hit the same shots. Um, that I hit in the practice round. Got it in the fairway off the tee, hooked my next uh, approach shot into the water on the left, and then took my drop and put it in the water again, just like my practice round, and made a natural aid out of it, but because we do have the triple bogey back, so. Well, fortunately, it ended up not costing you the title. What do you enjoy about the tour? Um, it's meeting the guys playing golf, both of which I, I enjoy a lot, but I'm also a competitive person, so you can mix all three of those together and just bang it out. How many years have you been coming down for? Uh, I've been coming down to, down here for about five and playing on tour for eight or nine. So I take it we can plan on seeing you again next year and for years to come? Yes, you can. Well, Tom, congratulations. We wish you the best and look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we welcome in Casey Dickinson, the B-Flight winner here of the Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. How's it sound to have the title National Champion in front of your name? Sounds pretty good. Gonna get used to it again. And it's just taking my time. Just getting used to it, really. You'll warm up to it, I promise. That shouldn't be a problem at all. You were trailing by two coming into today. How'd you sleep? Kind of walk us through the day. Slept fine last night. Just tried to treat it as another round, like I've been doing all week long. Take each hole, hole by hole and just Go play that one and try not to think too much about it. How was your game coming in here? Obviously, you know, sounds like you were playing a lot this year, getting ready. What was it like getting in here? Well, that came down about a week ago. We spent some time over at Port Royal using their short game area, hitting balls over there, and I've been playing really well. I felt really comfortable coming down. Had, had a Trent Jones of the course that fits my game, so I felt really good about it. You said you've been coming down for 10 years or so. What is it about the Golf Week Amateur Tour, not only here on the national level, but on the local level that really appeals to you? On the local level, there's a lot of camaraderie. You get to know, uh, you know, you get to know a lot of good people and then uh, have people to play with. And I've been coming down here about 10 years, so this is the only time I get to see some of these guys. And it's good to come down here and see them and play with them. Obviously, we have a lot of golf courses down here. Do you have any favorites? I like Trent Jones. I really like Arthur Hills. Arthur Hills has grown on me over time. It wasn't, it didn't, it didn't suit me at first, but it's really grown on me. Uh, I really like Dolphin Head I played this week. So yeah, it's, uh, it's great golf. Strengths of your game? Got up and down a lot this week. Usually hit the ball in the fairway. And generally for any golfer, that's the recipe for success. Can we plan on seeing you down here for years to come? Because now that you're a national champ, you have to come back. I mean, you don't have to, but don't you kind of want to? I'll be back. I gotta at least come back next year. Well, Casey, congratulations. We wish you the best. We look forward to having you back. 
We're here with Luke Lavarado of the Charlotte Tour, the Sea Flight champ. How's it feel to be a national champion? <laughs> It's funny when you put it that way, it sounds pretty cool. National champ, think about that, it'll sink in. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's an honor, it was a lot of fun this weekend. Now, do I understand things correctly? This is your maiden voyage down here for this event? Yeah, I joined the tour in Charlotte this uh, this past year, played about nine or 10 tournaments with the, on the local side, had a great time, met a lot of good dudes, and uh, just been having a blast. I won the finals to get my entry here, otherwise I wouldn't have come. And, I'm really glad I did. How did you initially find out about the tour and get into it? Um, just playing a lot of single golf uh, and, and met a buddy that had mentioned it, told me to get involved. And, and I, uh, three, four months later, I played in the February tournament, the first event. You came into today close to the lead, not quite leading. Walk us through the day and how it was out there on the course, because obviously things get a little dicey out there, but eventually you opened up a five shot lead and won by five. Yeah, it was uh, interesting. I was glad to not sleep on the lead. I was one shot back. <clears throat> um, the conditions changed certainly, but <clears throat> I looked at the score on hole 16 and I, I was three shots ahead with three to go. So I put, I put the leaderboard scoring down and I just, uh, I just went after it and, and didn't really change much from the weekend, just steady golf. What did you think of Hampton Hall? Wonderful golf course, huh? It was great. Um, it was really wide open, so I, I play a, a pretty high ball flight, often to the left, curling to the right, and I could play it. We call it a baby cut. That's what we call it, a baby cut. Well, the cut, uh, I could play the cut there, so I enjoyed it. It was a great course, really great course. Do you plan on coming back and visiting us now and making this an annual trek? Uh, 100%. I, uh, You're a national champ, so you have to. Yeah, sure. I'll be back. We're going to bring the wife next year because I think she'll love it, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, congratulations. We look forward to having you back. Thank you very much. Willie Hughes from the Tidewater Tour, national champion in the D-Flight. How does that sound? Uh, it sounds great. Uh, totally unexpected, but you know what? When things work, things work. You were the low score today over at the Hills course at Palmetto Hall, a, a challenging golf course, and you were low by a couple. Walk us through the day, how it kind of panned out. You were tied for the lead coming in. You know, I'm going to take you right back to last night. You know, you were tied for the lead. How would you sleep last night? Like a rock. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, you know, it comes and it goes, and it is what it is. And if you play well, I'll take it. If you play badly, well, that's D-flight. That's the way it goes sometimes, right? How many years have you been coming down here for? Uh, this is actually my second, but I've been coming down for three. How many years have you been playing on the Tidewater Tour and been part of the tour? Three. So it's been three. What do you enjoy about the tour? Just the people that you meet. And uh, quite honestly, it, the three people that were in our groups for the last three days were some of the funnest people I've been around. And it's a lot of fun and you can't take it too serious. You know, and that makes it all that more enjoyable. What did you do to prepare for this week and get yourself ready? Uh, we had uh, the, the Lava Cup and we played North Louisiana. And uh, that, that was a lot of fun. A great group of guys out of Louisiana. And, you know, it gets us ready and you get used to being warm again because it's not that warm at home right now. <laughs> well, that's one of the appealing things about coming down here, right? Yes, it is. It's uh, beautiful weather. Unfortunately, a little bit rainy today, but most of the time it's been really great. So to be a national champ, something had to be clicking this week. Uh, more than anything, my iron play. And I was sticking pin, uh, balls pretty close on to the pins and you know, making a few putts here and there, and it worked out well. Well, Willie, we congratulate you. We hope you enjoy everything that goes along with being a national champ, and we look forward to having you back. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us for Golf Center's coverage of the 2017 Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. For Daniel Court, our production crew, Keenan, Butch, and Debbie, and myself, Chris Tremblay, we'll see you next time.